Today, I'm going to show you how to create this abstract minimalist landscape. I've seen several pieces posted, and I wanted to try and figure out a way to do something similar in Blender. The nodes are fairly easy. We're going to do a few setups that are about this level of complexity. Special thanks to my Gumroad and Patreon supporters. If you want to support me on Patreon, I've got a link to all my blend files from my tutorials and uh, some extra blend files as well from projects that I've made. To set things up, I'm going to get rid of this cube and hit Shift A to bring in a plane. I'm also going to change to the Cycles Render Engine over here in the Render Properties. There's no reason you can't use Eevee, but I'm just more used to Cycles and tend to get a better result. So I'm going to switch there. I'm also going to change this to GPU Compute because my computer works a bit faster with the GPU active, but you may not have this option depending on what your graphics card is. I'm going to change the top right to my 3D viewport, make it a little larger there. And this middle area is going to be my shader editor, just so we have more room to, to work here. I'm going to put that material that was on our cube onto our plane, and I'm going to hit N to get rid of that shelf on the right. If you're hovering over the 3D viewport, you can hold down Z, move your mouse up, and you'll be in rendered mode. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here, grab this light, and just delete it. And I'm going to bring in some sky lighting here. Go to the world properties, and next to color, you can open this up, and you can either click on sky, or you can just hit S and that'll add in a sky texture. And I'm going to set this to something a little lower, maybe 0.2 or something like that. So I'd like to view this from the top. Uh, while hovering over my 3D viewport, I'm going to hit 7 on the number pad, and then the period slash delete key to kind of zoom in and center everything on my plane. So let's get started with the texture. I'm going to hit Shift A and bring in a gradient texture. This is a Node Wrangler shortcut to go Control, Shift, and left click. It gives you a preview of the node. If that's not working, then you just need to go up to Edit, go to Preferences, and under your Add-ons, you know, type here Node Wrangler. Make sure there's a check mark next to here. I'm going to change the gradient type here to be spherical, and I'm going to select this gradient node here and hit Control T. That's another Node Wrangler shortcut. Just creates a texture coordinate and a mapping node automatically. And I'm going to plug the object output into that mapping node. We can see we now have a circle. I'm going to bring in a color ramp and just place it after this gradient texture here. Move this principled BSTF out of the way for a second. I'm going to change this to constant. When I do, you can see if I drag this flag down, we get this uh, white circle in the middle, black on the outside. I'm actually going to reverse these so we have white on the bottom and black on the top there. And basically, this is going to be our frame. So we just want this to be as big as we want our circular frame to be. I'm going to set it at 0.32 for now. That looks pretty good. So let's look at the principal BSTF for a second. And there's this slider down here that's called alpha. If we drag this all the way down, the mesh becomes transparent. And so we can actually use this output to influence that alpha value there. The black in the center is equal to 0, and the white on the outer edge there is equal to 1. So if we plug this into the alpha, we can see that that middle area actually becomes transparent. We can control that with this slider right here. I'm going to create a second plane just by hitting Shift A and uh, selecting plane. And I'm just going to move it slightly down. Uh, I'm not going to worry about being too precise here, just maybe something like this here. And to do that, I'm just hitting G, Z, and moving it down. If you don't like the way the sun works as well, you could bring in an HDRI. I'm going to use this for now. Maybe what I'll do is I'll increase the sun elevation to something like 75, so it's more dead on. And let's go 0.05 with my strength there, something like this. And actually, I'm going to turn off the ray visibility too on world properties. If you come down to ray visibility and unclick camera, it'll make it so that background isn't visible there. So I've got that second plane. I'm just going to click new to create a new material. And I'm going to bring in a texture coordinate node, which actually comes up faster if you type, start typing coordinate. And I'm going to hit uh, control, shift, and left click until I get to the object preview there. And I'm going to bring in a separate XYZ node. If we set this on Y and put a color ramp right after here, set it to constant, we can control you know, how far this line goes uh, down or up. The only problem here is it only goes to about halfway because uh, this is coming out of object. And you know it really only maps out to halfway there. So to fix that, I'm just going to bring in a map range node, place it here. And if we bring the, this min down, you can see it lowers that a little bit. I'm going to set this at negative 1. And now this color ramp 
allows us to reach basically the whole range, especially everything that's visible inside that circle there. So I'm going to set this at something like 0.4 maybe. You know, this is our first hill, so we don't want it to be too high. And then, right before this separate XYZ, I'm going to bring in a noise and a mix RGB and place it right after there. And then I'm going to plug object into color 2. This allows us to have a controller for how much influence this noise has on our line there. So we bring this to 1. It's like that noise isn't even there. We bring it down we start to see some distortion there. So it's a little bit rough. I'm gonna lower the scale on my noise to two. And if we bring this down, you know, it looks pretty cool there. We can bring this down and then bring this up and get a variety of different setups here. I'm gonna go 0.6, maybe 0.65, not 6.5, 0.65 and, uh, you know, maybe, around 0.5. That looks pretty good for my first hill. I'm also going to set this at 4D because that allows me to have this W value that I can just click through, get different variations on that first hill. I kind of like the look of this one here. So I'm going to plug this into the alpha and actually I can see I have to switch these around because it's going to be the bottom part that is invisible. So let's bring the black up, bring the white down. We'll set the black at 0.5. Let's choose a color for that hill. I'm thinking something like blue. Looks pretty good. I'm going to grab this plane that my first hill is on, hit Shift D, and then Z, and just move it down a little bit, roughly the same amount as that first one. And then I'm going to click this button right here to create a new material. I'm going to grab this slider on the color amp, just move it up slightly, and let's change the W value, although you don't really need to, which is kind of helpful. And what I'm going to do actually is just change the sun rotation because the angle right now, I can't really see those hills very well. Maybe change the elevation a little bit to like 60. You know what, I'm going to change to an HDRI just to get maybe a more natural result. I'm going to go to Environment Texture and just open up something. I've got some ones in uh, this folder here from HDRI Haven. So it's a free website. A lot of great ones there. I'm going to use Kaylee Interior 1K. So if you click that, it just loads in and we can see it's a little dark. So I'm going to turn it back up to 1 or something similar. Maybe let's go like 0.5. Here we go. A little mood lighting. Now that we can see where that second hill ends a little bit better, I'm just going to adjust it slightly. Maybe bring it down to something like here. If we wanted, we could change the scale of the noise or the mix here as well. You know, it's completely up to you how you want to do this. But I'm going to leave it at 6 point, or 0 0.65 and 2. I'm going to do one more hill. So I'm going to grab that bottom hill there, hit Shift D, Z, and just move it down a little bit. I'm not going to worry about being too precise. And let's click this button to make a new material and I'm just going to raise it up a little bit, something like that. And in fact, this is kind of covering a little bit much of my scene, so maybe let's have that one right there. I'm going to grab the second hill, move it down a little bit. Let's watch what we're doing while we're doing this. Yeah, maybe around there. In fact, I'll put this at 0.5 because I liked that shape of that second hill, or pardon me, that first hill. And so I'm going to use that as my second hill, and then just move this first hill down. A little bit more. Something like this looks pretty good. Okay, next up I'm going to make the moon. So I'm just going to bring in a new plane all together. Move it down a little bit below that uh, third hill there. And let's create a new material. Why don't we start naming these? That's probably a good idea. I'm going to call this moon. Let's call this hill three. This one I'm going to call hill two. Hill one, and this is going to be my frame. I'm going to grab that plane that we started with our moon texture, and I'm going to hit Shift A and bring in a texture coordinate. Hit Control, Shift, and left click until you have the object output there. And I'm going to bring it into a mapping node, then into a gradient node, set the gradient to spherical, and then run it into a color ramp. Set this to constant interpolation. If I bring this down, 
we can see our circle there. So we could move this around with the location, um, you know, X and Y to move it up and down, side to side. I'm actually going to make a second branch here, though, because I want to make, uh, you know, two spheres kind of, you know, working with each other to create a little sliver of our moon. So right now, these are in the exact same spot. I'm going to modify this bottom one so that it's basically offset slightly. I'm going to set the X value here to 0.2 and the Y value is going to be at negative 0.1. So if you look at this first one, it's in the middle. This one is slightly off center. And then what I can do is just multiply these together using just a regular math node. Open this up, hit M to set it to multiply. And let's bring this into the bottom. So it's not quite right yet. Uh, what we need to do is make sure that basically the values that we're multiplying together is going to leave something left over for us. So let's think about this for a second. We've got white in the middle and white in the middle. You know, how can we do this so that it's, you know, just the sliver remaining? I'm going to look at the multiply output here for a second. And if we swap these around on the top, we get a pretty easy moon shape right there. It's hard to see the bottom, but it's basically a crescent shape because you know, this is white in the middle, and this is white right here. So the two whites are basically where we're going to get that, um, you know, non-transparent area. One times one equals one. And every other area, because there's black, it's going to be zero times one. And that's just going to be zero, and so that translates to black. On this top color ramp, I'm going to set this white flag to 0.277, and this bottom one, I'm going to set it to 0.264. And right now the moon is quite big, so I'm going to adjust that by bringing in a value node to adjust both of these scales at once. Because all of these are going to be set to the same number, I can plug this right in here, and it's just going to set them all to the same thing. So I'm going to plug it into both of these, and then set this value node to 10. And that's going to make the moon quite a bit smaller. The last thing I'm going to do is make a reroute right here by holding down shift and right clicking and dragging through and then I can add a vector math node right before here. This allows us to move our moon around. I'm going to set this to negative 0.48 and negative 0.38. It's going to place my moon just up in the sky here. Lastly, I'm going to plug this multiply output into the alpha. And then let's look at our principal PSTF. It's hard to see because we don't have a background yet. Let's add that next. Shift A. Let's bring in another plane. And just place it right before that moon layer, right below that moon layer. To create a new material, and we'll call this sky. On this layer here, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to make a little bit of a gradient so that it looks like the sun set not too long ago, and also create some stars in the sky. So let's bring in a texture coordinate node. Just to start typing coordinate and hit Control Shift Left Click until you get the object output. And I'm going to bring in a separate X, Y, Z for the gradient first. Let's come out of Y and let's bring it into a map range node, which we're just going to leave as default for now. And I'm going to bring this into a color ramp. I'm just going to choose two colors here for the color ramp. Sometimes it's useful to have a color palette chosen before you kind of tweak these colors. I'm just going to do it on the fly. Uh, just see what I come up with here. I'm going to get some orangey, maybe yellowish color there on the bottom. And for the top, I'm going to go with kind of a darker purple color. Maybe something like this here, and then just darken it a bit. And then I can adjust it on the color ramp here, but I can also adjust it on the map range node here. So let's do a little bit of both. Let's bring this down a bit. Maybe I'll just go like this. Bring this up slightly. Yeah, I like the look of this. And I just tweak it until you, you're satisfied, but this looks pretty good to me. I'm going to add in some stars here. So I'll just bring in a mapping node, place it here, run object into here, and then I'm going to bring in a Voronoi node and place it right afterwards. And uh, I'm just going to come out of distance here. And I'm going to change this to Minkowski. I'm going to change the scale to maybe something like 20. I think that'll look pretty good. You can kind of see the approximately si or the approximate size of the stars right there. And I'm going to bring in a color ramp 
it just plays it right after here. And let's leave, actually, uh, we'll swap these around. We'll, we'll bring the white way down, and the black is going to be around maybe 0.29, something like that. So it's not too many stars. If you wanted more stars, you could bring this up a little bit more. If you wanted less, you could bring it down. 2.9 looks pretty good to me. And then I'm going to bring in a mix RGB, place it right here. And uh, this color ramp is going to go into the factor here. And let's look at this for a second. This color ramp here is going to go into color 1. And color 2 is going to be the color of my stars, which I'm just going to leave at white for now. And then let's feed this into the base color on the principled BSDF there. For some reason, it's got kind of dark. I'm just in the render properties here. And by adjusting these light paths here, we get more light bounces. I think that's what's happening is it just may be a little too far down. So I'm just going to bring this transparency up a little bit to 10. And that seems to have fixed my issue there. I'm going to change the color on some of these hills as well. So let's just see which hill I've got. Oh, that's the moon. Okay. So let's grab, in fact, I'm just going to make a split here. Let's go to the outliner. And let's look at plane one is the top one. So this is the first hill here. Let's just make sure. Yeah, it looks good. I guess it's called hill two. So that's not the first hill. This is the first hill here. So let's go to hill two. And just make this slightly darker. And then hill three will make even slightly darker than that. Let's see the effect. Yeah, something like this looks pretty cool. I like that. And finally, let's tweak the color on this frame here as well. So uh, maybe to go with the purple, I'll make it just slightly green with the orange and purple rather. You know, very subtle, um, but just to give it a little bit of contrast. Might be too many colors, but uh, I think it looks nice. We could also consider doing different frame cutouts here too. You know, this is the circle cutout, but if I move this over, I've got this diamond cutout, which looks pretty cool. And this is just using the formula from the first uh, tutorial that I made, actually, where it's, you know, two absolutes coming from a separate X, Y, Z that are added together. And then I've got this color ramp right here. Another option is something like this one here, which is, um, you know, kind of that leaf shape or whatever. And this can be oriented different ways. I've got an absolute and an exponent, or power rather, with exponent to two. If I swap these around, it would be the other way. You know, if I went power here and absolute, now it's oriented differently. Okay, that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed that. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Thanks a lot for watching.